ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguidance and every destroy wa kullu dalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hell fire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam again allah has allowed the ones who are here to live to get closer to ramadan by another week since last jumaa and we are trying to get ourselves ready what the sahaba did for 5 months we are trying to cram into these last few weeks hoping by Allah's mercy that we'll be of those who see Ramadan to reap its rewards to get closer to our Lord to earn his forgiveness and his mercy and to be of those whom he's pleased with to do this to get ourselves ready we cannot be like those who never want to hear about death death is a reality and it's coming at any time whether you're young or old healthy or weak uh, sick strong or weak rich poor whatever it may be it will come when it wants to come when Allah sends it and Allah has given us warnings and signs to make us realize that worshiping him alone without partners is the path to eternal forever bliss happiness good times good health youth whatever it may be that will be from the rewards of being in jannah this is the true success he prepare who prepares for his death and is not heedless Allah says كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Allah says what means every soul will taste death and nobody can live forever every soul will taste death and on only on the day of resurrection will you be paid your wages in full Whoever on that day is saved from Jahannam from the hellfire and admitted into the gardens of paradise into Jannah he will be or she will be the one who is successful the life of this world is only <clears throat> an enjoyment of deception it's a deception enjoy 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 so we chase it until the time comes and we say what did i do what choices did i make why did i choose to go this route and then it will only be regret and it will be of no avail ibn umar radiyallahu anhu he said kuntu kuntu ma'a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam fa ja'ahu rajulun min al-ansar fa sallama 'ala an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam thumma qala ya rasulullah ayy al-mu'minun ayy al-mu'minin afdal qala ahsanuhum khulqa qala fa ayy al-mu'minin akyas قال اكثرهم للموت ذكرى واحسنهم لما بعده استعدادا اولئك الاكياس this hadith which is hasan in sunan of ibn majah prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
when he was approached by this Ansari, the Ansari said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, which of the believers is best? He said, the one with the best character, the best manners. And we constantly remind ourselves of this. أَثْقَلْ شَيْءَ عَلَى nizan, Your akhlaq, your manners, your character is the heaviest thing that can weigh down your scales of good deeds on the day of resurrection. So he said this, he said then to him, which of them is the wisest? He said, it's the one who remembers death the most and is best in preparing for it. <laughs> Those are the ones who are wise. Because you know that not even your next salah, if we make it to salat al-jum'ah, then salat al-asr, every time you think, death could come to you. Because it doesn't spare anybody, and it can come at any time. These are the ones who are wise and not foolish. So don't be, he- don't be heedless. Do not ignore the warnings and the signs about the brevity of this life and the lack of its value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابَهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, draws near the reckoning for mankind. Didn't the Prophet sallam, in his time, فِي زَمَانُهُ مَا قَالْ بُعِثْتُ أَنَا وَالسَّاعَةَ هَكَذَا Didn't the Prophet sallam, in his time say, I've been sent in relation, closeness, proximity to the hour, to the last day, like this, and his two fingers were close together. So every day, every year, every time that goes by, we're closer to the time that this world will end. If you're not seeing all the signs that were foretold, coming to light, coming to truth, and you do not wake up to that, then you're as lost as the cattle that's staring into the blank space in the middle of the field. The Prophet ﷺ, he warned us, every one of us is saying, can you believe we're in March? Can you believe we're in 1444? Can you believe it's 2023? Why? Because from the signs of the hour, from the signs of the last day, why? Because the foretelling of the end of the time, the year will feel like a month, the month will feel like a week, the week will feel like an hour. And this is how time is running. Draws near that reckoning where Allah will bring out the mizan and put it forth and our deeds will be weighed while they turn in heedlessness. You're thrown a life vest, but you're choosing to drown. <laughs> you're thrown some help, and you're saying, no, I'd rather suffer. Allah is giving us every way out of the disparity of this dunya. And we're choosing to say, no, we don't want it. We, made the, the, we reminded ourselves of the statement of Ibn Qudama last week, about the person being in the need of Allah, in the middle of the ocean, all he has is a piece of wood. Who was foolish enough to say, no, I'm not going to even use this wood to stay afloat. That person is not more in need than a person sitting in his home بين أهله ومالك. Between his family and his wealth and his property, that person is just as much in need as a person in the middle of the ocean with no help in sight, floating on a piece of wood. Allah says, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ خُذِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, and warn them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of a day of grief and regrets when the case has been decided while now they're in a state of carelessness and they believe not. The warning was given to us. You can't say, I didn't hear. I didn't know. It's evident every day of our lives. <laughs> Verily, we will inherit the earth and whatever is on the earth and to us, they will all be returned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ غَذَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُتِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرْقًا Allah says what means, and keep yourself, O Muhammad sallallahu patiently with those who call upon their Lord. Allah commanding the Prophet sallallahu to have good friends. Have good companions. Be around good company. Who are they? It's not the rich guy. It's not the best looking guy. It's not the guy who gets all the girls. It's not the best companion you have. The best people you can be around are the ones who remind you about Allah. They remind you to say Bismillah because you're so thirsty. You go to drink without saying it. They remind you to say it before you eat. You sneeze and nothing but comes out of your mouth. But air, they remind you to say Ahi. Say Alhamdulillah so I can say Alhamdulillah. Reminding you to say when you're planning something for the next hour or the next day, reminding you to say inshallah because everything happens only with Allah's decree. 
This is the good friend, the good companion, the one who will hold you back instead of sinning. Instead of committing a ma'asiyah, disobedience against Allah. This is the good companion. He commanded the Prophet ﷺ, O Messenger, O Muhammad ﷺ, keep yourself patiently with those who call on their Lord. Your companions who remember Allah with glorification and praising and prayers and other righteous deeds, morning and afternoon, seeking His face. And let not your eyes overlook them, desiring the pomp and the glitter of this world. And obey not those whom in whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance, one who follows his own lusts and whose affairs or deeds have been lost. And this is what it is. You can have someone who truly loves you, someone who truly cares for you, by your side, wanting some assistance, wanting some help, some guidance, some advice. But you're so concerned with the dunya that you'll turn away from this person who truly loves you just to focus on the pomp and the glitter of this dunya. Because why? This person, he's not rich. He's not popular. He's not going to help me fulfill my desires. So even though he's your true good friend, your best friend, the one who will love you and care for you because he wants you to go to Jannah for the sake of Allah, you look for those who you desire most. You look after those who will help fulfill your desires and you choose them over the good that you have. Allah said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلُّ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى قَلْبِهِ وَبَصَرِهِ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us when He says in the Qur'an, what means have you seen Him who takes as His Lord, as His God, His own desires. And Allah knowing Him this way, and Him only caring about His desires, Allah leaves Him astray. He seals His hearing, He seals His heart, He puts a cover over His eyes, who will then guide Him after Allah, will you then not remember? Allah has given us these warnings. He's giving us the guidance, especially to not let our desires become our true Lord, the one we worship and the one we care to please. The meeting with Allah is a reality, and it is one that we must all remember and focus on, and prepare for. And there's nothing better than that, than to do that as you get to Ramadan, so that in Ramadan you can make it strong and firm, so that could be your year-round your year round foundation. Because you're always remembering the meaning of Allah. Don't let the foolish people say, you're so pessimistic, you're so dark. You're, no, it's not dark, this is reality. And Allah did not say, Hope, don't hope for His mercy. Allah did not say, don't hope for His forgiveness. Allah did not say, don't enjoy of the earth what is lawful and halal for you. But remember death. Because young or old, rich or poor, educated or an uneducated, illiterate, strong or weak, good looking or ugly, death comes for you. When Allah wants it, you cannot run away from it. And Allah will tell us what we used to do, what we used to think, what used to happen in our innermost thoughts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهٌ إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am only a man like you. It has been inspired to me that your ilah, your God, your Lord is one. He is one alone without any partners. Allah. So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, the one who hopes to meet Allah, and for Allah to cover him of his sins and conceal his sins, and forgive him for his sins, and tell him to go to Jannah, so you can get the prize of seeing the face of Allah. Let whoever hopes for that meeting with his Lord, let him work righteous deeds. And iman is not just a belief in the heart. Al iman tasdiq al qalb al qalb wal amal bil jawar wal qawl bil lisan. Iman, faith, is not just saying I believe. It's not just saying it's in your heart. There has to be those righteous deeds, as Allah constantly reminds us of in His ayat. Let him work righteousness and associate none as a partner in the worship of his Lord. This is how you will meet Allah and be in a successful state. Allahu alladhi rafa'a al-samawati bi ghayri amadin tarawnaha thumma stawa ala al-arsh wa sakhra al-shamsa wal-qamar kullu yajri li ajil musamma yudabbiru al-amr yufassul al-ayati la'allakum bi liqa'i rabbikum tuqinun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says what means 
Allah is He, the one who raised the heavens without any pillars that we can see. He raised the sky and the heavens without any pillars that we can see. Then, istawa ala al-arsh. Again, for us to be successful, our tawheed, our aqidah has to be correct. You have to know this. Allah, He created the heavens and the earth with no fatigue, no need for sleep, no need for rest, no need for food. He could have done it in the blink of an eye and He chose six days. Then, istawa ala al-arsh. He ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His majesty. So when we ask, where is Allah, you do not say everywhere. His knowledge is everywhere. His eyesight over everything. His hearing over everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us in the Quran that He is stawa ala arsh. He ascended above His throne. And His throne and His kursi, He's above Him, separate from His creation. But He's fully aware of everything that happens on this earth. He ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His majesty. Remember, we don't ask the kayf, the kayfiyya. How? It's a way that only Allah knows, and we are not to ask it. Asking it is an innovation, a bid'ah. He has subjected the sun and the moon to continue going round and round, each running its course for a term appointed. He regulates all of the affairs, explaining the ayat in detail, that you may believe with certainty that you will meet your Lord. All of this that you see, how did this happen? How was the lightning running through the, the skies last night? The thunder booming in there. Subhanallah, you said the wal malaikatun Praise be to Allah. Praise and glory and thanks be to Allah. That thunder is the ra'd. Praising Allah, glorifying Allah. And it's the noise from the angels, their fear of their Lord. We see these things the rain coming through, the water dropping, so we have water to drink from. To water the, the plants so that fruits and the, live, and the stuff can grow and the livestock can drink from. The sun and the moon running their course, they reach into one another. When the days of the sun get longer, the night gets shorter. In the winter, the night gets longer, the days get shorter. This is a plan. Only Allah can do something this sophisticated. These are all signs, what? That you will meet Allah, you will meet the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of you and me, the creator of everything that exists, what you see and what you don't see. Allah is the Lord of all of it and we will meet Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, and when it is said, verily, Allah's promise is the truth. And there is no doubt about the coming of the hour. You said, we know what is the, what is the hour. We do not think it is but conjecture, and we have no firm convincing belief therein. This was the response. وَبَدَأَ لَهُمْ سَيِّئَاتُ مَا عَمِلُوا وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ And the evil of what they did will appear to them and they will be completely encircled by that which they used to mock, that which they used to make fun of, that which they used to not believe in. And it will be said, this day we will forget you. وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا It will be said to them, this day we will forget you because you forgot the meaning of this day of yours and your abode is the fire and there is none to help you. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, reflecting on death, knowing that it can come at any time to any one of us and any one of the ones we love, is part of what will ground us in Allah Ta'ala to remember our Lord, remember the meeting with our Lord, with Allah. Keep us away from sin and lead us more towards the actions which will please our Lord. Allah said, وَنَادَ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيدُ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Allah said what means, and the dwellers of the fire, those who are in Jahannam, they will call out to the people of Jannah, the inhabitants of paradise, saying, pour on us, some water or anything that Allah has provided you, you with to relieve us, relieve us of this painful torment and punishment. And the people of Jannah will say, both water and provision Allah has forbidden to the disbelievers. <laughs> 
الحياة الدنيا فاليوم ننساهم كما نسوا لقاء يومهم هذا وما كانوا بآياتنا يجهدون They will say about those people that Allah will not allow that Allah has prohibited any help to come to the ones in Jahannam those who took their religion as amusement and play and the life of this world deceived them they got caught up in it thinking this was their Jannah so this day we shall forget them as they forgot the meaning of this day and they used to reject our ayat, our proofs and our evidences. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, the mother of the believers. She said, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu, wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ah. She said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. So it was said to him, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, does hating to meet Allah mean hating to meet death? Because all of us hate death. So he said, So the Prophet وسلم, he said, لا إنما ذاك عند موته إذا بشر برحمة الله ومغفرته أحب الله أحب لقاء الله فأحب الله لقاءه وإذا بشر بعذاب الله كره لقاء الله وكره الله لقاءه. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he clarified this. It doesn't mean that you hate death. In this case, you hating death doesn't mean that you hate to meet Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he clarified it. He said rather that it is only at the moment of death. Because if you're given glad tidings of the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah, then you're going to love to meet Allah, and Allah's going to, Allah's going to love to meet you. But if you're given tidings of the punishment of Allah, then this person is going to hate to meet Allah. Because then next up will be his punishment. And Allah hates to meet him. And this hadith is sahih in the sunnah of Ibn Majah. May we be of those who love to meet Allah, and Allah loves us, and those who... Hate, who hate uh, يعني, to disappoint our Creator or do anything displeasing to Him. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam None of us should want for ourselves or our families or our loved ones or our, anyone from our ummah to be in this boat Do not wait on serving Allah Life is about preparing for things so that when the time comes you meet it in the best of ways. And this is what we're trying to get to with Ramadan. And it should be our firm hold, our firm standing point for the whole year. Ramadan comes, if we're allowed to see it, as a recharging point to make ourselves firm upon this deen, having the istiqama, doing the righteous deeds at all times, not just looking for it in Ramadan. So do not wait to serve Allah. Do not be of the heedless ones and prepare for the meeting with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشِرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, but whoever turns away from my, my reminder, at all times, not just in Ramadan, we are not Ramadan Muslims, we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be Jum'ah Muslims. We should be Muslims who aim to strive to have Iman, to be from the Mu'mineen, and Ihsan, to be from the Muhsineen. Those who worship Allah, كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّمْ تَكُمْ تَرَاهُ فَهُوَ يَرَاهُ Who worship Allah as if you see Him, but knowing that you don't see Him, He sees you. This is what we should strive for, because any day could be our last. And when we live like this, knowing that we will meet our Lord, He will question us, where we will be humiliated, or we could be granted forgiveness and mercy, then maybe, maybe we'll live, uh, live a dunya life more pleasing to Allah. Allah said, whoever turns away from my reminder, 
He neither believes in the Qur'an, nor he acts upon its order. This Qur'an is the speech of Allah, the book of Allah. Yes, it came down in the month of Ramadan. That's not the only month the ayat came down. Whoever turns away from this book, from this Qur'an, from the words and the speech of Allah, verily for him is a life of hardship, and we will raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. قَالَ رَبِّي لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتَ بَصِيرًا He will say on the day of resurrection when he's blind, O oh my Lord, how did you raise me up blind when in the dunya I used to see? I wasn't a blind person. I had my vision or my glasses or my contacts. I could see in this dunya. Why did you raise me up blind? قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَثَتْكَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى It will be said to him, Allah will say, what well, means like this, our ayat, our proofs, our evidences, our verses, our lessons, our signs, our revelations, they all came to you, but you disregarded them, you left them, you didn't want to think about them, you treated them as nothing, you turned away from them, and so this day you will be neglected in the hellfire, away from Allah's rahmah, away from Allah's mercy. Imagine living this dunya, in this dunya, and we say we're Muslim, and we pray, and we fast, and we give our zakat, and we give this. You think this is just your ticket? Do we want to slip into the mindset of the Christians of the Nasara who just say someone died for our sins, or I'm upon this so I'm saved? It don't work like that. How do you want to be, what do you want your state to be on the day of resurrection? Can you imagine living this life, seeing, knowing the haq, knowing the truth, able to hear it? Yet on the day of resurrection, you'll be blind. And when you're asked about why you are, it'll be told that you turned away from this Qur'an, you turned away from this book, you turned away from our lessons, you turned away from the sunnah of the Prophet you turned away from the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to end with this hadith from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu qal, he, he said, shall I not tell you what I heard directly from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, I heard it and I memorized it. In the abd al-qatala tis'atan wa tis'ina nafsan, ثم عرضت له التوبة فسأل عن أعلم أهل الأرض فضل على رجل فأتاه فقال إني قتلت تسعة وتسعين نفسا فهل لي من توبة قال بعد تسعة وتسعين نفسا قال فأن 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 طب صيفه فقتله فأكمل به المئة a man came and a man had killed 99 people. Now you know the hadith. Then the idea of repentance occurred to him. I need to stop doing this. It is evil. It is wrong. Let me go and find someone who is knowledgeable from the people of the earth. So he was told to go to this certain man in some of the hadith. It says he was a monk. So he goes to him and he says, I've killed 99 people. Is there any hope for tawbah, repentance for me? The monk said to him, you've killed 99 people? In a questioning form, like, are you crazy? Why would there be anything good that should be given to you? So the man, he drew his sword and he killed him, thus completing 100. ثم عرضت له التوبة فسأل عن الأعلم أهل الأرض فضل على رجل فأتاه فقال إني قتلت مئة نفس نفس فهل لي من توبة قال فقال ويحك ومن يو وَمَنْ يَحُولُ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ التَّوْبَةِ أُخْرُجْ مِنْ الْقَرْيَةِ مِنْ الْقَرْيَةِ مِنْ الْقَرْيَةِ الْخَبِيثَةِ الَّتِي أَنْتَ فِيهَا إِلَى الْقَرْيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ إِلَى الْقَرْيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ قَرْيَةِ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَاعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ فِيهَا فَخَرَجَ يُرِيدُ الْقَرْيَةَ الصَّالِحَةِ فَعَرَضَ لَهُ أَجْلَهُ فِي, في الطريق فأختصمت فيه ملائكة الرحمة وملائكة العذاب قال إبليس أنا أولى به إنه لم يعص يعصني ساعة خط قال فقالت ملائكة الرحمة إنه خرج تائبا then the idea of the man after killing the hundred person came to mind came to him again let me make tawbah I can still turn my life around let me find the most knowledgeable person on the earth so he went and was directed towards one who was very knowledgeable, an alim, someone who had ilm. He told them, I have killed 100 people. Can I repent to Allah? He said, woe to you. 
What is stopping you from repenting and making tawbah? Leave the evil town where you are living in and where you're committing your sin and go to this town where there are good people who worship Allah, pray to Allah, be amongst them, have good company, be around those who worship their creator alone without partners. And then you will be in that state of having your tawbah accepted. So he went out, but while heading there, he died. So then Malik al he sent out his, his, angel, his angels to come and yani, take his soul. So the angels of mercy came rushing to take it. And the angels of punishment came rushing to take his soul. And they argued over him. And Iblis, Satan, he came and he said, I have more right over him. He never disobeyed me when I called him to disobey Allah. He never disobeyed me. So I have more right to take his soul. But the angels of mercy, mercy said, he went out repenting. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the hadith continues for the sake of brevity. In many different narrations, you see different things. One, that he had actually died. It was said, measure the distance from the land he left to where he died and from where he died to the land of goodness, where he was going. And whichever he's closer to, take him. In some narrations it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he moved the earth so that he was closer to the land where he was going to do good deeds. And so the angels of mercy took him. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الذَّمْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهِ The one who repents from a sin, it's like they did not sin. Allah said, لا تقنط من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Allah said, do not despair for the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah forgives all sins as long as you come to Him with a repentant heart. Shirk, you must repent for, you must make tawbah for. But Allah is so forgiving and merciful. He can even forgive you for things you didn't repent for as long as it was not shirk. The message from today as we prepare for Ramadan in less than two weeks, ta'ala, may Allah allow us to see it and reap its rewards and get closer to Him in His pleasure and be from the people of Jannah and saved from the hellfire. Think about death because it can come at any moment. Don't think it's a pessimistic world view. You can still enjoy your dunya. You can ask for both. But your both, your goal, your mindset should be on good in that next life, first and foremost. Think about death. Remember you will meet Allah. And you could either be one He doesn't want to look to, look at, purify, speak to. From them, Al-Muslim, Al-Mannan, Al-Aqul Al-Walidayh, Al-Shaykh Al-Zan, Al-Shaykh Al-Zani, and the likes of them. Right? The one who has, drags his garments out of arrogance, or he reminds people with his favors, or he's disobedient, or she's disobedient to their parents, or it's an old person who commits zina, or they sell by false oaths, saying, Ah, oh, I swear I bought this for that, man, I'm not making no money on it. Those things, Allah will not look at you, speak to you, purify you. You'll have a painful torment. No, you will meet Allah. You could be of those He doesn't want to look at, or you could be of those He says, Come here. And He draws over you a cloak, or some type of veil, or some type of screen, so no one can hear. And you reveal all your sins, and you think you're doomed, and He says, I'm going to forgive you. Why? Because you concealed your sins and the sins of people on this earth. Which way do you want to go? And lastly, do never despair for the mercy of Allah. I don't care what you did before this second right now. I don't care how many sins you have. I don't care how many major sins you've done. I don't care what you had planned even. You're in control of your choices. Allah gave you free will. You can still turn your wife, life around. And your wife around, inshallah. <laughs> and the women, the women, just to be fair, they can turn their husbands around. All right? You can still do that. Do never, never give up. Allah will, did the sun rise in the west today? Did it rise in the west today? It did not rise in the west today. So you have a chance. Is the soul rattling in, you, in your throat right now? Do you hear like your soul is going to be pulled out? Are you on your deathbed right now? No, it's not. You can repent. You can seek Allah's forgiveness. You can get closer to Allah. And you can be of those who end on that good ending. May Allah make us from them. Allah ma'fil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat. 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 Al-M
انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المر-